Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. This episode of Blackish hit close to home for me. But before we go any further, do me a big favor hit that like button and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you, my lovelies. Now let's get into this episode. So, our lovely little Diane is blossoming into her womanhood. She's beginning to have feelings for boys and hiding social media accounts and posting sexy pics online. When Andre and Bo found out that she did that, they were upset with her behavior. And let's be honest, their upset was PG-13 upset. Andre and Bo gave her an extensive lecture, but between me and you, we both know that in reality, that was grounds for a cut ass. Hell, sometimes a lot of us girls used to get a beating for a lot less. Diane, consider yourself lucky they didn't degrade you or physically and mentally scar you for life like the rest of us. And on the other hand, Jack was posting shirtless pics on the internet. And I believe he was kissing a girl in a stairwell. I think that's what they said. I'm not too sure. And he was praised for it. And the classic line, that's my boy. I love the fact that they had Diane challenge her parents' beliefs and authority. Oh, you think we could have done that in our time? Hell no. That was considered back talk or back chat. It had a strict policy of children should be seen, whooped, and not heard. And when Diane challenged their archaic beliefs, they had the classic asinine reason why they're harder on her versus Jack. Oh, a girl can get pregnant. Like Diane said, Jack can get a girl pregnant. And I was like, yes, you go, Diane. You challenge them. You let them know. Then they went on to say that they are preparing her for how the world would view her. I definitely don't like this excuse. Is it how the world would view her? Or how will a man view her when it's time to get married? Remember, there was once a time when it was a man's duty to protect his daughter's purity for marriage. And these behaviors and patterns are passed down to generation to generation, where it's very hard to challenge this way of thinking. This was considered normal thinking in the past, and it's still considered normal thinking today unless we challenge these behaviors it's not just going to go away on its own and it will just simply manifest itself into the next generation and when they ran out of reasons to justify their anger towards her and not jack because remember Bo said she doesn't know why she keeps thinking like that automatically when she wants Diane not to be afraid of her sexuality. And the truth of the matter is, guys, you shouldn't live your life and center your beliefs on how the world will view you. It doesn't matter what you do. You can stand completely still, do nothing, and the world will see still find something to rip you to shreds about. Society is toxic and I don't like it here. Now, let's tackle the topic of a girl can get pregnant versus a boy can't. This excuse is not a valid reason to teach your daughter to fear her sexuality. Many of us women were fiercely taught 
it was wrong to exhibit sexuality. That's why I said a lot of us got whooped for a lot less. Look at how he policed Diane in the way how she was dressed. Just because of how a boy will look at her. I think he said that boys were punks on her because the way she was dressed. And even by saying this, you are saying a man has the right to have his way with you because you are dressed a certain way. Ladies, let me tell you something. You could be stag but naked in the street. I don't care. A man never has the right to your body. I don't care who he is. He could be your boyfriend or your husband. If you don't give your consent, he is not entitled to touch you. Within my own community, if there was talks of a woman or a girl being sexually assaulted, the first thing they would do is victim blame. They will say, look how she dress. How her mother should I raise her better? And they would also say that's what she get for dressing slutty or being fast. And the hurtful thing is, not only would the men say things like this, but the women would also say things like this. The mothers would also victim blame. And... Then they will turn to their sons and say, that's why you shouldn't be checking for girls that dresses like sluts. Statements like these are, that you are putting in young men's minds is making him believe that he's entitled to a woman's body even if she doesn't give consent. Just based on how she is dressed. That, that's wild to me. And when these young people grow up to become rapists, we act dumb like we don't know why and how, what, when, where, <laughs> how, these, how these children grow up to be so, okay? Just keep in mind, guys, words have a lot of power. They have a lot of power of, of influence and people don't understand the weight of their words. Words have history, words have weight, words have meaning. Okay, so be careful of the words you say because sometimes your words could be, you know, the matter of life and death. Okay, so be careful. And society doesn't just stop there. A lot of parents encourage young boys to score the panties and rack up their body count like Assassin's Creed. With the classic lines, that's my boy, or from the mothers, you'll be such a ladies man. Aww. Aww. And for him to score the panties, that's somebody else's daughter. And that is potentially your own daughter if everybody is raising their sons the same way. And the response is... That is somebody else's problem. The problem with society is we always say it's not our problem when we are the ones creating that problem. And when the boy gets these young ladies pregnant, the parents always absolve the young man's wrongdoings by saying that little hussy should have kept her legs closed. What is she trying to do? Trap my son? Parents are sending signals to the boy that it is not his responsibility to take care of his responsibility. And it doesn't stop at bad parenting. When a girl gets pregnant, they kick her out of school and the house. At least this was what was happening back in my time and in my community. You let me know your experience and what is happening now. I think I'm a little bit out of loop, so forgive me. <laughs> and the boy gets to remain in school and he's not forced to man up 
like they are forcing the girl to woman up and I want to share with you an example my uncle's wife's son he apparently has 19 kids and when his mom said that to us um, as a family setting the way how she said it she said it as if it was something for her to be proud about. I'm like, man, that's nothing for you to be proud about. You're, so, you're supposed to be so shamed that you don't even want to ma mention that. Because number one thing that running through my mind, where is he getting the money to, to support 19 kids? And I know he don't have the money like that. And ha have you spoken to your son about, you know... You know, keeping it in his pants for one. Shit. Ugh, and, and it has a lot of parents like that. That would allow their sons to be out here knocking up people. People's daughters left, right and center. And not even trying to stay them better. And. One of the reasons why fathers fiercely protect their daughter's womanhood is because some of those same fathers don't know how to keep it in their pants. Some of these men are the same men that they are warning and threatening their daughters about. The sins of the father will fall on the head of the children. When I was first coming into my womanhood, um, I was about nine. I couldn't talk to boys, period. I couldn't have friends over. I couldn't wear certain clothes. And I couldn't go by my cousin's house over the summer. So in the Caribbean, we call this bag up. I was bag up bad. And the reason why, you know, I couldn't do all of these things that, you know, they freely allowed my brothers to do. The reason that they gave was a girl can get pregnant and a boy cannot. And a lot of girls didn't have a say or was allowed an opinion. Remember, I told you this was considered back chat and disrespectful. You would have gotten more licks. And you couldn't even cry about it. That was abuse. And from this type of upbringing. When you get into a relationship. Or get married. All you are focused on. Is how do I please my lover. How do I please the man. Remember a lot of us wasn't allowed. To explore our sexuality. It was how do I live my life. Always keeping in mind. How a man will view my choices when it's time for a relationship or when it's time for marriage. So when women are now increasingly saying what they require from a man and now saying exactly what they want, some of these men can't handle it. How dare you have standards? How dare you have a sexuality before me? How dare you? I hate to hear people say that's why I want a son. Because a lot of people are under the misconception that raising a son is a lot easier than raising a daughter. Nothing ain't go so. They're not easier. It appears to be easier because many parents do not raise boys. And plus, the classic lines, boys can't get pregnant and boys will be boys. In my opinion and my perspective, by parents only raising their daughters and allowing their sons to do whatever they want, go wherever they want, whenever they want, and do whatever they feel, you are saying I am raising my daughters to accept the bare minimum in a man while giving the man their best. And while the boy doesn't have no responsibilities, 
and he doesn't have to do anything and he doesn't have to put in any effort into anything. And I'm not here to give you any parenting advice because I'm not a parent. I just hated what my parents did and what I saw other parents doing when I was a child slash teenager. One thing for sure, if God blesses me with a daughter, I will not, I repeat, I will not police her sexuality. I will teach her it's okay for a woman to have and be allowed pleasures and teach her not to be afraid of her sexuality and how to set standards and most importantly, how to love herself. These are things I had to struggle to learn in my early adulthood. And I would love that my daughter know these things from jump so she doesn't have to go through the same struggles I did. Because some things, some consequences you can't handle. So anyways, this is just my humble little opinion. You let me know your thoughts and feelings about this episode. Like I said, it really hit home for me and I had to speak about it. So I hope you enjoy this video. As always, make life fabulous even when it's not. And I'm gone. Bye.